any content related discussion that you want to have, don't hesitate to send me an email or communicate with me on, on the WhatsApp group. I've given you both uh, the 1510 and 15, oh, 1501 and 1502 WhatsApp groups. Make sure that you, jo you join the, the group that is relevant to your module so that you don't get confused during the discussions. Okay, so let's start with today's session. You will let me know if you are not seeing my presentation. <clears throat> so today we're going to look at how do we do hypothesis testing, looking at the difference between two population proportions. And today is the end of April, probably, because the next time I see you, it will be in May. The other thing I need to ask is your module, the 1502. Is it a year module or is it a semester module? And if it's a semester module, when are you writing your exam? Am I alone in this? It's a year module, so we're writing October, November. Okay, so it's a year module, so at least we have time. Thank you, because I was worried if it's um, semester, then we need to also relook at the content. Okay, so in May, we're going to look at those topics. Um, where I will show you before we, we leave the session where to find all this information, including also the notes and where we will find the recordings. I know that UNISA is having some difficulties in uploading some of the videos, um, but I, um, I think on the WhatsApp groups, I did share my YouTube channel. There are some of the videos that you can use there as well. Um, you just need to subscribe so that every time I upload new videos, you'll get a notification and you, you are aware of new information that gets uploaded. Um, yeah, so let's go on. So at least now you know what topic we're going to be discussing when. Please remember all the session starts at six o'clock, unless if I tell you otherwise, but all the sessions start at six o'clock and at half past seven. Do you have any question, any comment? before we start with today's session. Okay. Silence means that there, there are no questions or queries or comments. So uh, what you need today, likewise, you need the statistical table, I hope you you have them ready next to you. If you don't know where to find the statistical tables, sometimes they are uh, at the back of your prescribed book. Or they are, uh, if you have past exam paper, past old past exam papers, they are at the back of those past exam papers. You can use that. I'm not sure if your module do give you a tutorial letter with tables. If not, then those are the resources where you can find the tables. You will need the calculator. Every time you come to these sessions, you must have a calculator. And I think the best calculator to use is a Casio calculator. If you do have it, uh, because of the complexity of your formulas that you use, you can use Casio. It can capture fractions and powers and all that in one go, and you just click equal or answer and you will get your answer. But you will need to practice how to use your cash your calculator in order to use it. Otherwise, we're going to do step by step when we solve problems. So by the end of the session today, you should learn how to use hypothesis testing for the proportion of two independent population, also to form a confidence interval for the difference between two population proportion. And let's learn how to do that. So because we're doing hypothesis testing, remember there are six steps 
of hypothesis testing and since you write a multiple choice question paper all those six steps can be part of the multiple choice question options that the lecturer wants you to answer so you need to be able to know how to do all six steps and understand each and every one of them how to get the answer from them so step number one is to know how to state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis and remember your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis are what your researcher wants to prove and disapprove um, then you need to identify the things that are given including the level of significance the sample sometimes you because here we're talking about the proportion, what um, proportion are you given as well? You need to be able to identify what um, is the appropriate test statistic for the proportion. For the proportion, we use only one test statistic, which is the Z test statistic. So it should be easy to do. Determine the critical value. Here you will determine the critical value of a Z test statistic using the Z table, which is also called the normal standardized um, distribution table. And with the critical value, we use them to identify the region of rejection. Whether you're doing a one tail test based on the hypothesis, actually the symbol stated on your alternative hypothesis will tell you whether you are doing a one tail test or a two tail test and you will identify the region of rejection based on those critical values that you have step number five you need to be able to calculate your test statistic remember the test statistic you, that you i have identified in step number three you should be able to calculate that and step number step number six you need to be able to make your decision and conclude and your decision is based on your test statistic and the critical value and if it's p value it will be used you you will use the p value and the um, level of significance or your alpha value to make a decision and when you make a decision you either reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis never ever state it otherwise don't say um we are not rejecting the null hypothesis that's not how you state the statement or you say we fail to reject the null hypothesis that's not how you're supposed to state it in your statistics module so we say we reject the null hypothesis or we do not reject the null hypothesis okay so <clears throat> with any Hypothesis testing, um, there are some assumptions and there are some goals that you need to know what you, you need to be proving. So here, in terms of the proportion, the goal is to test the hypothesis or form a confidence interval for the difference between two populations. So it means we say population one is equals to population two or the population one um, and population two have no difference. That's what we, oh, they are different. That is what we are testing. Your assumptions will state that the sample times the pro sample proportion should be greater than five, greater than or equals to five, or your um, sample two times the proportion of two should also be greater than two, or otherwise the inverse of both, which is the, um, your sample times your one minus your proportion should be greater than or equals to five. So we call the values that you're going to use to estimate or to calculate, we call those the estimates. And these are your sample estimate and your sample one estimate minus your sample two estimate these are the ones that we're going to use in the formula to calculate in order for us to know whether we need to reject or we need to not we do not reject the null hypothesis uh, somebody's uh, mic is wrong okay sorry
So these are what we call also the sample statistics. So which will be the sample proportion one minus the sample proportion two, but they are just point estimate for the difference between the two samples. Okay, so in terms of stating the null hypothesis, we need to assume that the null hypothesis is true always. So we will assume that your population one is equal to population two, and the pool of the two sample estimate will be calculated as follows. So we will calculate, this is one of the measure and we call it the pooled estimate because this will give us the sample, the mean, let's, let's call it like that, which is the pooled estimate, which is P with a bar, is your estimate, which is given by your observation satisfying your sample observation one plus your observation satisfying your sample two divided by your sample size one plus your si sample size two. We will use this when we calculate the test statistic as well. Okay. The test statistic that we're going to use, we said it is the Z statistic. So you also need to remember all these things. In the exam, you will be given all the formulas. You just need to identify the correct formulas because you're not going to be told what this formula calculates. You need to know that this formula will calculate the proportions by looking at the symbols on the, on the, um, the formula. So your Z test statistic for the proportion, it will be calculated by your pool, uh, your sample estimate or your point estimate of your sample proportion one minus the sample proportion two, minus the hypothesized population proportion one minus population proportion two. Now the population proportion one and minus the population proportion two will always be equals to zero. And normally in the formula, we don't even see that. Um, divide by the standard error, which is the square root. Now, you remember we, we, we spoke about the pooled estimate. Now here, it will be the standard error will be given by the pooled estimate times one minus the pooled estimate times one over sample one plus one over sample size two. Where we know that our sample proportion, um, remember now in 1502, it's a build up from 1501. So if you're doing both of them, I feel sorry for you because some of these concepts are discussed in detail in in 1501. So UNISA should not allow you actually to register 1501 and 1502 at the same time because the knowledge you gain from 1501 needs you need to apply it in 1502 because in 1501 you will learn about all these point estimates as well. So if in the question they did not give you a sample proportion which is P1 guppy if they did not give you that, you need to know that that is given by observation satisfying that um, sample size divide by the sample size. So those um, a point estimate or what we call a sample statistic proportion called P1 from, from the sample one, it will be given by observation satisfying that sample one divide by the sample size of that sample one. And that will give you the point estimate. So if they didn't give you this, you need to know that you need to calculate it by using the observation given divided by the sample size for both of them. Okay, so let's look at how we do the hypothesis testing. So, Remember, one of the steps is to identify your critical values, but on your null hypothesis, you always state 
your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. So if your null hypothesis stated that the population proportion one minus the population proportion is greater than or equals to zero, then the alternative will state that the population proportion one minus the population proportion two will be less than zero. And that will be a one tail test because we're only going to concentrate on the symbol, this symbol, the less than. And that less than will tell us where our region of rejection will be because it's pointing to the left. Therefore, our region of rejection will be to the left. And we will put our critical value there to define our region of rejection, which will be that part. And when we make decisions, if our test statistics fall somewhere in the blue shaded area, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, if it falls in the white area, we do not reject the null hypothesis. In a word format, we state it in this way. We say we reject the null hypothesis if the Z test statistic is less than the negative Z critical value. Now, because it's one tail test, when we go find the critical value, we do not divide alpha by two. Only when it is a two tail test, then we divide alpha by two. For the upper tail test, which is also one tail test, we look at the alternative. When the alternative says it's greater than, therefore it means the region of rejection will be on the right hand side. And also, if your Z test statistics falls in the shaded blue area, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject the null hypothesis. For a two-tail test, it will be given by not equal. Therefore, it means there are two tail or two regions of rejection where we can make decision. Then it means our alpha will be divided into two and we go find the critical value based on that alpha divided by two. And once we have the critical value, if our, we will have two areas where we can reject. So you will go and calculate the Z test statistic. If it falls in the white shaded area, we do not reject. If it falls in the negative, let's say your Z stat answer, you went and you found that it was minus 1.0. 1.23 because it's minus 1.23 it will be in the negative so if it falls here you're going to reject but if your z stat was 1.23 it will be in the positive side if it's positive then you're still going to reject so depending on the answer you get you're going to look at whether does it fall on the, this side the right hand side or the left hand side Otherwise, if it falls in the white shaded, um, the white area, then you do not reject the, the hypothesis. So it means Z stat less than negative uh, critical value, we reject. Z stat greater than the critical value, we reject. So you have two options to reject your null hypothesis. Now let's look at an example. Is there a significant difference between the proportion of men and proportion of women who vote yes on a proportion um, proposition A? So now we need to find out whether are there differences between men and women, the proportion of men and the proportion of women on this pro pro proposition given for what? So we are also given some facts with this statement. So they will not just give you the statement, they not give you some facts to help you answer that question. In a random sample of 36 of 72 men, so here they give us the sample that has 36 out of 72 for men and 30, 31 out of 50 women they voted yes. So 36 of men voted yes and 31 of women voted yes. Now here they didn't give us 
the proportions. They just give us the observations in terms of our observation of sample one, which will be for men, and sample two, which will be for women. Our observations are 76, and our sample size is 72. So there were 72 men and 50 women. So we now know that we have our X1 and N1, and X2 and N2. That's all what we know right now. And they also give us the alpha of 0 0.07. And they asked, is there a difference? Therefore, it means we need to do a hypothesis testing. And here now I'm applying already Newman's error analysis method prompts. Because now I've identified the values that I need. Now I can go and do my hypothesis. The first step is to state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis says the population there is a there is no difference between oh there is no difference between population one and population two. It means that both proportions are equal. My alternative will state the proportions are not equal. And the reason why I'm picking up that it's a two tail not equal, it's because in the statement here, they didn't say men are more than female or females are less than male or are more females and less male, something like that. So they didn't give you those clues that you can use in your hypothesis testing. Yeah, it's just a general, they are equal, not equal. Okay, so this is a two-tailed test. Therefore, it means already in my mind, it's a two-tailed test. It means I'm going to find two regions of rejection. Therefore, it means I'm going to, when I find my critical value, I'm going to divide my alpha by, by two. And we know that our alpha is 0 0.05, right? That's what they gave us, 0 0.05. Okay, so now, I must state what else am I given. Uh, we know that we can calculate our sample proportion because they didn't give us the sample proportions there, but they gave us the observations satisfying those sample proportions. We know that for men, we had 36 out of 72, which is 50, uh, 0 0.5 or 50 percent, 0 0.5. And for female, it's so women is 0 0.62. So we do have our sample proportions. We need to also calculate our pooled variance. Remember, oh, sorry, our pooled estimate, which is X1 plus X2 divided by N1 plus N2. Remember that? So it means we're going to say 36 plus 31 divided by 72 plus 50. And that we get our pooled P with a bar, pooled bar which is our mean estimate, uh, we get 0 0.549. Now we almost have everything that we need. Then we can continue. In this instance, I'm going to calculate the test statistic and we just substitute the values. P1 was 0 0.5 minus P2, P2 copy, proportion, uh, sample proportion two, was 0 0.62. The hypothesized proportion mean difference, remember, it's always going to be equals to zero because we take it from the hypothesis. Divide by the square root of our pooled uh, estimate, which was 0 0.59 times one minus our pooled estimate of 0 0.549 times 1 over 72, which was our sample size 1, and one plus 1 over 50, which is our sample size 2. You can put this onto your Casio calculators, the one with the fraction thingy, and when you get the answer, it will give you 1 comma, uh, minus 1 comma 3, 1. Finding the critical value, to find the critical value, remember, we use Z, alpha divided by 2, and we were told that our Z is 0 0.05, therefore divide by 2, 
we will find our critical value by using Z of 0, 0,025. Now, in order for us to find this Z value, we need to go to the Z table. Depending on your module, if your Z table looks like this, which is a standardized, in your module, sometimes your Z table, uh, yes, no, your Z table will look like this, where you will have two digits before, going there and two three digits going there so here you will start with 0 comma 0 0 and yeah we will have 0 comma 0 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 and so forth and and there as well it will continue like that so yeah you will have 0 comma 0 1 and so forth now in order to find the critical value of this we need to go inside this table and look for 0, 0,0225 depending on the table that you are using sometimes the table is 0, it's in four decimals so therefore it will be 249 if it's in four decimals so that will be the two the 0, 0,25 you're going to take this value and go outside and go find the value that it corresponds with. I'm going to remove this because the value that it corresponds with, it will be 1,9. And then you're going to go up and then you will see that at the top, you will have 0, 0,06. You will take that 1,96. And because we're doing a two tail, you just put the plus or minus in front because it's in the negative side and in the positive side. And that's how you will find your critical value. To clear all of them. Then we have our critical values there. So we define our 1,96, 1,96, and we shade our area, shade our area. Now we need to find out whether where is 1,31. So our 1,31 it is somewhere in the do not reject because it falls somewhere there. It's not bigger than 1,96. It will always be less, and it's not uh, bigger than 1,96. It's less than. So uh, it's not less than minus 1,96, but it's bigger than that. So it falls in the do not reject area. The decision will be we do not reject the null hypothesis, and in conclusion, we state that there is not sufficient evidence of the difference in proportion who will vote yes between men and women. And that's how you make a decision based on their hypothesis testing. So let's do some exercises. Consider the following results from the independent sample taken from two proportion. The key weight here two populations, sorry, independent samples selected from two populations. Now, looking at the table, we are given sample one and sample two, the sample size, and the other key word here is proportion, the sample proportion. So therefore, it means we're not looking to do a t-test because there they said independent samples. The first session that we had, we looked at independent samples calculating the t-test because there we were given the standard deviations and the mean and all that. Yeah, you are not given that, but you're given the proportion. So clearly here we're doing the inference of two population proportions. Okay. So what are we given as well? We are given the sample size, we are given the population proportion, P1 guppy and P2 guppy. We are also given this observations, which are the number of successes, X1 and X2. The professor wants to investigate to whether there is a difference between two population proportions. So we just want to investigate if there are two if there are differences between two population proportion and we are told what level of significance is, which is our alpha. And this question is asking us if the test statistics for the difference between the proportion is this, 
Therefore, it means we need to calculate the test statistic. What is the test statistics for the population proportion between for the difference between the two population proportion? So then. That's what they are asking. That's what they are asking us to calculate. We need to go calculate Z stat. And that is your pop your sample proportion one minus your population proportion two divide by I'm not going to put the minus zero because it's pointless to put that. It doesn't add any value to the formula. Divide by the pool estimate times one minus the pooled estimate times one over N1 plus one over N2. Now we can substitute the values. The only thing that they didn't give us here is the pooled sample or the pooled estimate. So we need to go and calculate the pool estimate. So P bar is equals to X1 plus X2 divide by n1 plus n2 that's what we know from the formula so our x1 they gave us it's 192 plus x2 it's 108 divide by n1 it's 400 plus 300 and you take your calculator if you have a cash or calculator, you can use the fraction mode. If you don't have a cash or, then you will have to calculate what is at the top, which is 300 divided by 700. 192 plus 108. Divide by 400 plus 300. I hope you also get the same answer as me. You need to be able to calculate this. I get, I'm going to leave it to four decimals. 0, 0,42 If I leave it to four decimal, then it will be four eight four eight six. So we can come back and substitute our point est uh, point estimate one is zero comma four eight minus point estimate two zero comma three six divide by the square root of zero comma four. Two eight six times one minus zero comma four two eight six not three times one over the sample size one is four hundred plus one over three hundred. Okay. I'm going to use my fraction mode because the equation is very long. 0 0.48 minus 0 0.36 divided by the square root of 0 0.48. I am using a case here, 0.4286. You must let me know. If you're not getting the same answer as me, don't just take everything as I tell you, I want you to also do the calculations. I just remove everything. Okay, square root of, just give me a sec. If you have already the answer, you must just also let us know. 4287. What am I doing? That is 42. Eight six times one minus zero point four two eight six close bracket open bracket fraction one over four hundred 
What do you get? You can post it on the chat if you're getting a different answer to me. Uh, I'm also getting a different answer to myself. Because. What do you get? Oh, my answers are not what I am looking for. Three comma. Unless I am rounding off too early on the answer that we got there. Let's do it this way. I will do it step by step because I'm not getting the answer that I have there. So I will do it step by step. 0.48, since you guys are also not talking to me, 0.36 is zero comma. 0,12. Unless if you guys have disappeared and you are not here, I'm alone here. Uh, we, are, we are with you. Okay. Anyone who's getting a different answer? One over 400 plus. One three hundred okay. times point. Four two eight six times open bracket point four two eight six close bracket take the square root of the answer Why am I not getting the answer? Wait, 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 wait. One divided by 400. Times point four two eight six. Times open bracket one minus point four two eight six close bracket equals what answer do you get? Ah. Just give me a second. Okay, I'm trying to use my calculator on my phone, but I'm getting errors. I don't know why I'm going to get the real cashew because I was trying to use the one from my phone. 
Um, I think now I broke it. I don't know how, but it seems as if I broke my calculator now. I don't want the formulas. Okay, thank you. All right. I usually have an online calculator, but at the moment it's not working well. So let's do this for the last time. I'm going to use the case here. Uh, 0.48 minus 0.36 divided by the square root of uh, instead of calculating this point estimate manually, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I will have to use the the what the value that we have here. Um, I'm gonna leave it to instead of leaving it to four decimal, I'm gonna leave it to to five decimal and see if it makes any difference. Um, divide by the square root of 4.0.42857 times one minus 0.42857, close bracket, open bracket, uh, one over 300, uh -uh, 400 first, plus it doesn't really matter one over 400 let's see if i get the same answer and equal and my answer is 3.17 i still get the same answer which is not here so my calculator was right so we still get so probably there is something wrong with the with the answer that they have here. Unless if they round it off too quickly. I'm, I'm just going to check if I round off some of this. So I get 3 comma. I hope that is what you also get. 3 comma 1 7. So. I've also tried it three times and I keep yeah. on getting the same answer. Yeah, I just want to round off the the values that we have here on the the point estimate. Sometimes it's it adds. So let's leave it to 4.2, 4.3. Let's say it's 4.3, and I must do the same on the first one. Delete, 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 4.3, and delete, where am I putting answer? Okay, let's see what we get. Equals. I still get the same, 3.17, so probably there is something wrong with there. with their answer here it is 3.17 unless because we rounded off too quickly let's see if i don't round off too quickly because sometimes it adds it adds value there if you round off too quickly you're not gonna get the values correctly um Let's do all of it. So we have 192 plus 108 equals divide by 700 equals and that up zero, zero, I'm just going to use all the digits that I have, which is 0, 0,42. I'm going to use all of them and see if it makes any difference. 0, 0,42857. 0, 0,42857. 
0.5715-1429. And I know that previously I used to tell people that please do not round off quickly. And I think this is one of those time that you don't need to round off too quickly. You need to write out all the values and only round up when you get to the answer. Nope, that is not that case. I still get the same answer. So probably what their options here is incorrect. Okay. I'm not even going to waste any more time with that question. Okay, let's look at number two. A sample size of 150 from a population has 40 successors. So we are given N and we are given X. And a sample of two had a sample size of 200 from a population has 30 successors. So this is N1, X1. So the next one, N2 and X2. That's what we are given. For testing the null hypothesis that the proportion of the successes in the population one exceeds the exceeds, it means it's greater than the population, the proportion of the success in population two. So that's what they say. Population one exceeds population two. And remember, like I said, you need to learn this from STA 1501. In your null hypothesis, you cannot put, uh, you, sorry, your null hypothesis should always have an equal sign. So because the researcher wants to prove something that cannot go into the null hypothesis, this will go in the alternative hypothesis and your null hypothesis will be the false null hypothesis that we're going to create. Okay, which one of the following statement is incorrect? Okay, so before I can answer all this question, I'm going to just take a step back and then do the hypothesis testing. Step number one is to state your null hypothesis and alternative. Your null hypothesis states that population one minus population two is equals to zero. Your alternative will be population one minus population two is greater than zero. It's greater than zero because that's what the researcher wants to prove right now. The reason why I don't put less than or equals to, it doesn't really matter on your null hypothesis, whether you put less than or equals to or you put equal sign because it's just the null hypothesis always have an equal sign to it. So we always put the equal sign and we teach this in STA 1501. Okay, so that's the first step. Step number two, what is my alpha? Alpha will be given somewhere in the questions because that's what we're looking for here. They gave us our alpha, which is 0 0,05. I just use that because I just need it. I can calculate my point estimate, but before I calculate my point estimate, I need to calculate my P copy one. What is my P copy one? It's your X1 over N1. What is my X1? It's 40 over 150. And what is the answer? So you guys, you want me to give you all the answers. Huh? 40 divided by 150. That's not 0.2666 recurring. OK, so we just going to keep to two decimals is fine. So let's say it's not comma or four decimal, they keep it four decimal, not comma, two, six, six, one, two, three, four decimal will be, the last one will be seven. So let's go and do P2, P cap P2, X1, X2, divided by N2, X2 is 30, divided by 200. It's 0, 0,15. It is 0, 0,15. 0, 0,15. Now let's go calculate the pooled estimate. So we're still on step two. We're just going to do everything on step two, which is X1 
plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2. x1 is 40 plus 30 divided by 150 plus 200. And it is equals to one fifty zero point two two hundred zero point two. So we're done with step number two. Step number three is to go and find the critical value now. We are told we are doing a one tail test, so therefore it means we're going to find the critical value, step number three, by using Z alpha, and we know that Z is 0, 0,05. I need to find a table. Do you have your table? Go ahead and look for the Z test statistic, uh, which table it's called. Um, I keep on mis misplacing my 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 past exam paper. I'm going to use another. OK, I don't have. Do you have your, your tables in front of you? For some reason, I don't have a stat. I know that I just need to keep, just give me a second. Um, I used it the last time we met. We did look at the table, right? The T table. Um, for some reason today, that table is missing in action. I'm going to show you from this 15 term table. I hope it looks exactly the same as your tables. So let's see if they do have a table at the back. Yes, they do. So usually it is called cumulative standardized normal distribution table. It's a Z table. It's got the positive and the negative side to it. And here we're going to look at the negative side of that table. OK, so this is what it looks like. Cumulative standardized normal distribution. So we're looking for 0, 0,05. Remember that? So you come inside the table. If you look there, it's 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, 0, 0, 0,5, 0, 0,5, and 0, 0,5. There we go. I found it. 0, 0,049. There is 0, 0,51. It already passed 5, so we can use this one. We'll use this. So if we take that value and we go out, remember we first go this way. We go out and we find, you must write that number down, 2, 5. You can ignore the negative number in front. And then we go up. And then you go up this way and you take only the last digit, which is eight and put it next to the five. So that is our critical value. So now let's go back to our presentation. OK, so now we know that our critical value is two comma. That is based on the information, based on everything that we are doing here. Not right. Don't look at the questions. Uh, step number four is to go and calculate the test statistic. Oh, we can also find already here the region of rejection because we can draw it and say this is greater than, so therefore the region of rejection will be this side. So the year will have 2,58. And if it falls here, we're going to reject. 
the null hypothesis. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's go and calculate the test statistic. I'm going to put it here. Step number, step number four, we're going to calculate the Z test statistics. P capi one minus P capi two divide by the square root of our pooled variance or pooled estimate, which is 0 0,2 times one minus 0 0,2 times one over, uh, what is, oh, why am I putting the values in already? Sorry, my bad. I'm writing the formula first. Formula first, N1 plus one over N2, which is equals to our estimate. We calculated them. P1 is 0 0.2667. Minus P2, which is 0, 0,15 over the square root of 0, 0,2 times 1 minus 0, 0,2 times 1 over 150 plus 1 over 200. Let's do the calculation. Point 0.2667. Minus 0.15 divided by the square root of bracket. The bracket anyway, it's fine. 0.2 open bracket. 1 minus 0.2. Close bracket. Open bracket. Fraction. 1 over 150 plus fraction. 1 over 200. Close bracket and answer. What do you get? I get 2, 7 0 1. I'm going to leave it at that. What do you get? Okay. Now we need to answer the question. Do you also get the same answer? Maybe probably I've done something wrong. Do you also get the same? Those who have calculated. Okay. Silence means, I don't know, because nobody is saying we're still calculating or we're not calculating. Still still calculating okay you need to tell me Galoko. now if you are all quiet then i don't know what's happening Yes, I'm getting 2.701.0802, yeah. You do get the same, okay. Um, can you also calculate just the value underneath the square root, just the square root part, only the square root part? Um, I just realized we, we need also to find the standard error.
Do you have the answer? Zero comma four, some number nine. Zero comma zero four three. Zero comma zero four three, yes. Okay, so let's see if how we answer the questions. Now we have all the information that we require. So I'm going to use another pen, which in color. So let's look at this. The question is asking which one of the following statement is incorrect. So we're looking for the incorrect one. Now, number one states the population, the Proportion one is 0, 0,2, uh, 0, 0,2667 and proportion two is 0, 0,25. Why do we have 0, 0,15? 30 divided by 200. That's what we are calculating, right? It's 0, 0,15, yes. So this is incorrect because that says it's 0, 0,25. So that is 0, 0,15 size 200 population 2 has 30 successes so that is incorrect and probably then we will have to stop right there because that is the incorrect answer but i'm having a problem with this question because now if you go unless then the question was not asking what is incorrect so this is what you're going to get from your past exam papers as well the estimate standard error p1 minus p2 is 0, 0,19 we did find it is 0, 0,043 so therefore that is incorrect right the test statistic which we calculated they say it is 2,67. We said it is 2,701. So that is incorrect. I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to come here. The rejection region at alpha level for two tailed standard, devi standard deviation will be given by those two. Now, we know that this question is asking for a one tail test, but here they say for a two tail test. So for a two tail test, therefore the Z critical value will be alpha divided by two and it will be 0, 0,025 and therefore the critical value will be 1,96. And that's where the challenge is with this question. If you look at those two questions, those two, they are probably correct, both of them, because for the proportion, if we use normal standardized normal distribution, therefore it means our population needs to be normally distributed. And if it's not normally distributed, the sample sizes must be great, must be large. If you look at our sample sizes, 150 and 200, which n is greater than n is greater than 30, which is large enough. Otherwise, we can look at other assumptions because the other assumption said n1 times P1 should be greater than or equals to five. Oh, sorry, times P, but we were not given P as well. So between those two, if we go with the fact that the, one of the assumptions is not normally distributed, let's go to our first slide that we had here where they said the assumptions doesn't have to state that the null hypothesis or the uh, the population needs to be normally distributed. But usually the, for Z distribution, your population has to be normally distributed because we use a cumulative standardized normal distribution, which is a Z score. So two questions already. There are challenges with those questions. OK, so let's hope the other questions don't have the same problems that we see. So either one or the one or two will be correct. So if we only base the answer based on the questions given, this is not a two-tailed test, it's a one-tailed test, so therefore this will be incorrect and that one will be incorrect. But nowhere in the assumption states that the samples have to be normally distributed as well. So 
Okay, moving on to the next one. Let's look at this question. I'm not going to do all the steps of the hypothesis. We're going to go through the statement one by one, but I just gave you some insight in terms of when you go answer the questions, you can apply the uh, the hypothesis testing steps and then come and answer the question because then it makes it easier for you to identify where the errors are as well or which one is the correct one or which one is the incorrect one. Okay, let's look at this one. Consider a hypothesis testing for the population proportion with the null hypothesis. P1 is equals to P2, which we can also write this as null hypothesis stating that P1 minus P2, P1 minus P2 is equals to zero. Given the following information, your number of successes X1 and X2 are given. The sample size independent N1 and N2 given to the to, from the two populations. We used the data above to decide whether the percentage of population one is less than, this is a keyword, less than, it means it is less than the percentage of the population two. So therefore it means in our alternative hypothesis will state that P1 is less than P2 something like that, or we can state it in this manner, H0 is P1 minus P2 is less than zero. You can state it in that manner. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? I've already answered number, oh sorry, this is H1. I've already answered number one because I've stated number one here. So this is correct. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? We're looking for the one that is not correct. The sample proportion P1 is equal to 0 0.5 and P2 is 0 0.1. So you need to go and calculate P1, which is X1 over N1. X1, you were given 10 over N1 is 20. So that will be 10 divided by 20 which is 0, 0, 0,5. And P2? 0, 0,6 over N2, which is 18 over 30, which is 0, 0,6. Six. Is 0, 0,6. Therefore, it means this is also correct, right? Then we move to the next one. The Z test statistics for the two proportion is appropriate. We know that for the proportion, we always use Z state, right? So that is also correct. When we identify the test statistic, it's always going to be a Z for the proportions. The pooled estimate for the population proportion is 0, 0.56. So we need to go and calculate the pooled estimate, which is X1 plus X2 divided by N1 plus N2, which is 10 plus 18 divided by 20 plus 30. It's 0, 0,56. Which is 0, 0,56, which means that is correct. Then they say find the standard error. We know that the standard error is your square root of your pooled 1 minus pooled estimate times 1 over N1 plus 1 over and two, so which will be given by the square root of 0, 0,56 times one minus 0, 0,56 times one over 20 plus one over 30.
what do you get? Do you have an answer? I get zero comma one four three two nine and some numbers, which is totally different to that. Do you also get the same? Yes. Okay, so that is the incorrect answer. So let's look at the next one. A sample size of 100 selected from one population has 50 successes and a sample, I think we did this. Oh no, no, this is a different one. And a sample size of 150 selected from the second population has a 90, 90 successes. So X1 X1 is 50 and 1 it's 100 X2 is 90 and 1 uh, and 2 it's 150 You need to go find the pooled proportion. I am not going to calculate it for you. I'm just going to give you the formula. It should be easy, quick and easy to calculate. Do you have the answer? 0 0.56, 0 0.56. Okay. So you would have said 50 plus 90 divided by 100 plus 150, right? Yes. Which will give you 0 0.56. Six. Which is option, option four. Okay, I know that time has gone, but in terms of the confidence interval, we concentrated more on the activities of hypothesis testing, but the same principles um, also happens when you need to calculate confidence intervals. So it will be your sample proportion. Oh, shit. This is sample proportion two. Uh, sample proportion one minus sample proportion two plus or minus the critical value. Here we will have to find both uh, by divide uh, to find the critical value by dividing alpha by two times the standard standard error, which is P1 times one minus P1 divided by N1 plus P2, P gap two, which is the sample proportion two times one minus the sample proportion two divided by N2. So let's use the same information that we had, like we had the previous when we did the hypothesis testing. Here we need to construct the confidence interval on the same, oh sorry, on the same information. So we know that our X1 
n1, x2, n2, and we are told what alpha is. So we can calculate p1. We know it's 36 divided by 32, and we did find that it was 0, 0,5, and p2, which is 31 divided by 50, which we found that it was 0, 0,62. So it's easy to calculate the confidence intervals. So we remember it's guppy. So it's P1 minus P2 plus or minus because they are both sides for confidence interval. We will find the up the lower tail and then the upper tail. So we find the minus side and the plus side. So plus or minus defines your upper and lower. Z alpha divided by two. So it means we're going to find the critical value by dividing by two. We know that that critical value of alpha divided by two is 1,96 because from the previous activity that we did times the square root of your peak one guppy times one minus P one guppy divide by N one plus P two guppy times one minus P two guppy. Should start with one minus one minus P two guppy over N and two. And that is the formula. Let's go back there. P1 guppy, 1 minus P1 guppy, so we are on the right track. Okay, so now we can just substitute the values. P1 is 0, 0,5 minus 0, 0,62 plus or minus our critical value of 1,96. Uh, P1 is 0, 0,5 times 1 minus 0, 0,5, everything over N of 72 plus 0, 0,62 times 1 minus 0, 0,62, everything over N of 50. So first, let's do the calculation. Let's remove the bracket. Let's remove the, um, the values be after the plus or minus. So we say 0 0.5 minus 0 0.62 is equals to minus 0, 0,12. So I'm just going to write here minus 0, 0,12 plus or minus, and I'm going to do everything behind the plus or minus. So it's one point. 96 times the square root, open bracket, the square root of, and the first one will be a fraction, which is point five. open bracket, 1 minus 0.5, close bracket, divide by 72, and then plus fraction again, uh, point six two open bracket, one minus point six two close bracket, divide by fifty. And I need to close the bracket and Let's go one up. One up, close the bracket. And equals, and that is zero comma, and I get zero comma one seven seven three one four. I'm just going to stop right there, plus other numbers. So in terms of the criteria, uh, confidence interval, we need to find the upper tail and lower tail. So this side will be 
uh, it might change around because we have a minus there. So I'm going to start by doing the plus side, the minus side first, minus 0 0,12 minus, I'm going to do the minus first, minus 0 0,1773. One, four, seven. And then I must do the other side. So this is a comma. Let me put it somewhere here. So you can see minus zero comma one two plus zero comma one seven seven three one four seven. So we can calculate that minus 0.12 minus 0.177347 equals and the answer here this side will be minus 0 comma I'm just going to keep four decimals 0 comma 2973 Two nine seven three and on the upper tail area we have minus point one two plus point one seven seven three one four seven which is zero comma zero five seven three and that is your confidence interval and that's how you will answer the questions relating to confidence intervals so you can answer the same question uh, we have calculated the p's and the, the the sample proportions you just use that same information to to find your confidence interval. And also, which almost look exactly the same as that. So they should be almost the same. And that concludes today's session. Any questions, any query, any comments? Unfortunately, I am so sorry for the two questions that we could not answer them because of the errors from the questions. I will remove them for future references because I didn't assume that we're going to have problems with those questions. Any questions? I have posted the, the link to the register in the chat. Please make sure that you complete the register. If there are no questions or comments or queries, I will see you next week, Tuesday. Have a lovely evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.